quality versus quantity is something that is becoming more and more apparent when it comes to the video game franchise industry, seeking profits rather than enjoyment of a video game or fulfillment for creating a game that people want to play and talk about for years on end. What prompted this video was the re-release of The Last of Us, Part 1, not 2. 2 gets his own video, and to be fair, so does 1. For this video, I wanted to delve into what I think makes a game great. Rather than a video on The Last of Us, which is something I would like to do because it needs its own video, I'm going to discuss what makes a game worth playing and replaying and discussing for years even after its release. Now, there are multiple factors that go into a video game, most of the key ones being visuals, gameplay, immersiveness, and most important, in my opinion, the story. The Last of Us, on all accounts, gets all of these perfectly. Visually speaking, for a game that came out in 2013, almost a decade ago, The Last of Us had very good visuals, not just in terms of the way the character models looked, but also the environment. While some zombie apocalypse style games usually have dull colors and are often depicted in darker spaces, The Last of Us does not stray away from this for sure, but also doesn't shy away from showing the positives that we can take away from darker times, such as the scene when Ellie and Joel talk about the view outside of the city, or even more notable, the giraffe scene. Everything you were hoping for? It's got its ups and downs, but you can't deny the view, though. Whether it's driving across country, going to Jackson City, going to the hospital to the Fireflies, etc., The Last of Us shows all aspects of what visual effects can do for not just a game, but for the story as well. In terms of gameplay, it's an over-the-shoulder style game which is just a third person and follows a simple concept of go to this place, fight off some enemies, be it zombies or people, and choose whether or not you go in guns blazing or even use some stealth. There's also one act where Joel was fighting off some people, and this was just after Joel finally decided to give Ellie a gun, in which, unlike a large portion of games, Ellie is actually a useful companion AI, and helps rather than just makes it seem like she does work, like when an AI will pretend it's shooting and then it'll keep shooting the same target, but that target will never die. Which was actually similar to how Atreus helped Kratos in God of War, which again is another amazing game that deserves its own review. While this gameplay isn't anything groundbreaking, it's still nice to see that something so basic can be executed so well. Having the option to choose between multiple weapons is basic in most games as well, but still nice to have. These two factors tie into immersiveness, and this concept also ties into the last concept, which is the story, ergo an immersive story. The Last of Us not only shows what is one of the best stories written in a video game, but also shows character growth, symbolism, twists, darker concepts, and so much more wrapped into a video game that just simply draws you in. Video games are supposed to elicit a response in which you enjoy the game, and then you take in exactly what is happening, but for me, and this might be just me, it's only after The Last of Us was beaten that you felt like you were truly happy after you played it. Sure, there were some funny jokes that made me smile when Ellie had like banter with Bill and was messing around with the nude magazine that she stole. Oh, I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. Mm -hmm. it's light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that! Well, hold your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh. Why are these all stuck together? Um... <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Bye-bye, dude! But for the most part, when the game is being played, you simply just, like, get caught up in it and keep going and going to try to get to the Fireflies, only to have a giant plot twist, not really a plot twist to be honest, towards the end. It takes a lot of darker turns and within the first 30 minutes of the game you take one of the 
darkest turns involving Joel and his daughter Sarah, and this was something that brought me to tears upon first seeing it. Somebody we've just been through hell. Okay, we just need... Oh no. Sarah. Move your hands, babe. I know, baby, I know. God. Listen to me, I know this hurts me. You're gonna be okay, baby, stay with me. Right. I wanna pick you up. I know, baby, I know it hurts. Come on, baby, please. I know, baby, I know. Sarah. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. If a game can grab you based on something like that, that quickly, imagine what it can do later on in the game. Granted, the story writing is still good. Joel and Ellie traveling together and growing close was incredible, and again, this is astonishingly similar to God of War with Kratos and Atreus. Kratos and Joel also have many parallels. They both have been through hell, Kratos literally has. They both have trust issues, they both have a hard time connecting to someone they care about. When it comes to Kratos, that's Atreus. When it comes to Joel, that's Ellie. And they both travel with their respective child, you know, Ellie isn't exactly Joel's child, but more of a father-daughter relationship is actually being built there. They try to meet a goal, bonding, and learning along the way. It's why both these games are held in such high regards. Now, I know I'm not reviewing both of these games, but I am trying to showcase what makes a game good, since both of these games deserve their own reviews. During the time that you travel with Joel and Ellie, the two talk amongst each other, at first only over the objective of getting Ellie to the Fireflies and anything based on survival. But then as the game progresses, they talk about things like football, and Joel even opening up and talks to... Ellie about his daughter Sarah, something that he never started to do. This simple dialogue helps showcase that this is more than just an objective, and that both these characters grow as you continue to play. You progressing in the game progresses the characters. It even gets to the point that they bond so much and Joel sees Ellie as his daughter so much he's willing to abandon everything they came here for, just to go back to Jackson with his brother Tommy and just live a normal life. Ellie wants to see the mission through, and Joel is hesitant but agrees. This major change in Joel is a big turning point for what happens later on down the line, and shows dynamic growth of a character, something that's relatively lacking in most games that are coming out these days. I know I've talked about The Last of Us and eliciting responses, and while having a good story is very apparent in these two games, you know, God of War as well, there's one other game for me hit home since it was like my first ever M-rated game that I played, Modern Warfare 2. Now, most Call of Duty games these days do have decent story, but none of them. And I mean, none of them made me feel as immersed as when Shepard killed Ghost and Roach, and how that twist made me want to get revenge, in which we did it in the most satisfying and honestly intense ways.
And I'm not sure about this part, but I think Modern Warfare 2 is one of the first games ever that actually lets you skip a scene in it for being like too gruesome, which was no Russian. It's a small little thing they added, but it speaks volumes for the direction a game can go. God of War, Modern Warfare 2, and especially The Last of Us are hardcore blueprints for what drives a game into being one of the greats. Modern Warfare 2 came out over a decade ago, Last of Us came out about a decade ago, and God of War about half a decade ago, and they're still awesome games that deserve a repeat playthrough. Now, some games are coming out, and they do seem to be okay like Starfield, Hogwarts, and Breath of the Wild 2, but two of those games already have a precedent and a story to go off of. I don't want Starfield to be a sci-fi game like Halo or Destiny with some like crafting aspect, that's not new and that's not original. Call of Duty and Modern Warfare 2, Last of Us and God of War were all original and did amazing in giving us a deep dive into what a good story and gameplay can showcase. Let me know what you all think in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of these games, or even if you want in-depth analysis of all the games that I did discuss in this video. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.